Rob here at eTrailer.com and today you're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2014 Jeep Compass. Now this is what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. It's going to have a really clean factory look to it because that cross tube is going to be hidden behind the bumper completely and all we're going to see is that receiver tube sticking out. Since it's a class three hitch, it's gonna give us that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. So whether we're towing a trailer, hauling a bike rack, or carrying a cargo carrier, we're gonna have a really wide variety of options that we can use. The way we're gonna mount any of our accessories is to the hitch pin hole here on the side. Our hitch is gonna accept a standard 5 ace pin and clip. Now these are not included in the kit, but you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com, along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are secure. Now if you are planning on towing a trailer, we're going to need a spot to hook up our safety chains. Our safety chain connection point is going to be at the bottom of the receiver tube welded on. And as you can see, we'll have plenty of room to get most size hooks on or off. And the fact that the hitch pin is just slightly offset from the center means we're going to have less chance of our pin and clip or locking device interfering with our safety chains. Now if you're looking for a hitch, obviously you're going to want to know how much it can handle. Our hitch is going to have a 400 pound tongue weight, which is going to be the maximum downward force of the receiver tube. So we're going to be able to load up some of those larger cargo carriers or bike racks that have even up to four or five bikes on them. As far as the gross trailer weight rating, our hitch is going to have a 4,000 pound rating on it. That's how much it can pull, including the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. But you want to keep in mind, you always want to double check your Jeep's owner's manual because you don't want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. I'd like to give you a few measurements and that's going to help you whenever you're looking for accessories for your hitch. Like a ball mount, a bike rack, or even a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's right about 5 inches. Now that measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and that they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be right about 13 and 3 quarter inches. That measurement is also going to help you when you're looking for a ball mount to make sure you can match up the appropriate riser drop for your trailer. And now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's put it on together. To begin our installation, you want to mark out the area that needs to be trimmed on the lower fascia. Now we'll find that diagram in our instructions. We're going to find the center point of our fascia in the easiest way is if we come to these two fasteners, measure that distance, cut it in half, and that'll give us our center point. You're gonna to wanna to use a pair of tin snips, a rotary tool, or you can use a razor knife. You just wanna score it several times before you push too hard. I'm gonna be using a rotary tool just to make a quick cut so I can have nice clean lines also. Keep in mind, it is always better to cut smaller because we can always take more material away if the hitch doesn't fit, but we can't add it back. With the fascia trimmed out, we're gonna need to remove the four pushpin fasteners that are on the very bottom. So I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver, and you wanna come underneath the center section of the pushpin first, kinda pry it out, and that's gonna take a lot of the tension off. Once the center is popped out like this, we can come underneath the base and we can pull the rest of the push pin out. We'll do that for the other remaining three. We're gonna to need to lower down our muffler so we have a little bit more room. But before we do, I'm gonna put a strap up to make sure it doesn't come down and cause any damage. Just put a little bit of tension on it. And if we move back towards the muffler, on each side, we're gonna have a rubber isolator on a hanger. We're gonna remove those. So you can take a little bit of spray lubricant. We're gonna spray them down. Now the main goal, I'm gonna take a pry bar, long screwdriver, whatever you have available, and you're just gonna wanna pry that isolator off the hanger. Now that we have this one removed, we're gonna move over to the other side and remove the one off the other side of the muffler. And with those hangers loosened up, I'm gonna loosen up the strap so our exhaust can hang down a little bit and we have some room to work with. Now if we look on the side of the frame, we're gonna have a hole that's gonna go all the way through, one that's gonna be pretty close to the back, and then one that's gonna be real close to the exhaust hanger here. 
I'm gonna grab the long bolts out of our kit. And we'll slide a flat washer in place. And we're gonna come from the outside, passing the bolt all the way through till it comes to the inside of the frame. And once it's in there and we know that it's going all the way through, we wanna pull it out to where it's still inside, but it's even with the inside of the frame rail. That way we can have room for the hitch to go in. We're gonna repeat that for the other hole, as well as on the other side. Now that extra set of hands, we're gonna put our hitch up. I'm gonna feed my passenger side in first, going above the exhaust. Well, you can work around the evap canister and everything on the driver's side. And once you have your hitch up, we're gonna rotate it until we get the bolts to come through, and it should hold the hitch in place until we can put the nuts on the inside. We're securing the hitch down. We use these flange nuts. Just wanna make sure you get them started by hand. They're not cross-threading. And each one of the bolts going through the frame is gonna get one of these. I'm gonna come back with a three-quarter inch socket and wrench. I'm going to tighten up all my hardware. You want to come back with a torque wrench and you torque all your hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. You want to make sure you're still holding it on the other side with a wrench so that the nut doesn't start slipping and just spinning on you. And you want to make sure you repeat that for all your remaining hardware. And we can take our exhaust and lift it back into position. Just going to spray a little more lubricant on there make it easier to slide back on the hanger. Then we can remove the strap. Then we can finally put all those push pins back in place on the bottom of our fascia. With the hitch torqued down and everything back in place, that'll finish up our installation and we're ready to hit the road.